So hi, my name is Yossi Salomon. I am the owner of DRA Creative Agency and um, welcome to the Online Prosperity Show. Today we're gonna to talk about how I became a graphic designer, why I'm a graphic designer and how it can help you and how I can help you make your dreams and imagination come true. So buckle in, it's gonna be a ride. to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show, where we bring you the best tips, strategies, and insights for achieving success in your online ventures. I encourage you to join us each week as we interview expert guests, thought leaders, and successful online entrepreneurs who have achieved great success in the digital world. This week, we've brought you Joseph Solomon, who is a graphic designer and the owner of DRA Creative. Joseph, how are you doing today? I'm good, Prosper. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be on here. Fantastic. Now, for those <laughs> that are watching this for the first time, uh, Joseph is the owner of DRA Creative, which is a boutique design agency based here in Melbourne. Now, he's got a degree in visual communications and design from Deakin University. And Joseph is passionate about creativity and innovation. And he's actually worked with clients ranging from the Queensland government to worldwide campaigns um, like Light for Peace. He's an avid gamer himself, a sports enthusiast, and an outdoor adventurer who knows how to balance work and life. So we caught him while he was in the middle of his play and we just want to ask him a few questions about um you know how he got started with his business now Josie um Joseph I'm going to be calling you Yossi as we uh move forward because I think that's an easier way to get acquainted to you now tell me a little bit about your business and how you actually um you know got started as a graphic designer sure so I was quite young um I don't know people have those dreams where they become they know right when they're from school, they know what they're going to be. And that was, I was one of them, luckily or unluckily, you know, who knows. But the moment's luckily. Um, so I saw these ads that were different in a way that they were very like movie posters, for example. They were called parody art. That's what I understood it to be. And they were advertising different events at my school. And I thought that's pretty cool. Like you can bring the two concepts together. And from that, that grew an appreciation for me to make flyers, advertisements for my school social events. Um, I worked on the school jumper and it just took off slowly and slowly and started a business eventually. Fantastic. That was my so, inspiration. I, I really like that because that was inspiration from something that you would have seen in the marketplace. Yeah. Now, does one have to be an artist in order for them to be a graphic designer? Well, it's, a, it's an interesting question you asked there, Prosper. Um, I would say not. The honest truth is not. Obviously, what you need is a creative mind. So there's artist, artistry and creative. They balance each other. I'm not sure if they're, they have to be together or not. But overall, I would say the creative mind is the most important thing to be a graphic designer. You need to have a way, a way of thinking. You have to be creative in thinking. And if you're not good in art, which I'm not so good at drawing on pencil and using a Wacom tablet, but my creative skills on a computer and my, therefore my graphic skills complement that. So I don't think you have to be an artist now, which may be controversial. I don't think. <laughs> Fantastic. It is, but because, it might be. <laughs> because some people might just be thinking, oh, maybe you need to have some sort of, um, you know, artist eye or brain in order for you to actually um, do a bit of graphic design work. Now you came from designing school jumpers and looking at mm -hmm. ads on TV. What then inspired you to start your own agency? So I realized that that was something I wanted to pursue. As I explained, I went to, I'd studied already. So I wanted now to explore that. What exactly does that mean? Does that mean I work for somebody else? Does that mean I um, go to university? How, what is the next step here? And I realized that in order to do that, I needed some guidance, some mentorship, because I realized that when I went to university, I told this to somebody recently, that university is like unemployment, except your parents are proud of you. You don't really learn much from university. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I realized I was up the creek, basically, without a paddle. And 
I reached out to somebody I knew who was a graphic designer who was running a small freelance on the side business. And I approached him and asked him, would you be interested in maybe doing a small partnership, working out logistics of the, of the business? And he was quite keen. And I thought that we complimented each other at the time. And that led to my entrepreneurship that I was actually studying whilst working in the business. I was doing half and half, full-time studying and working in my graphic design business or graphic design agency. And then that's probably like what from the story that took off. Fantastic. I like how you say <laughs> that, you know, being at university is just uh, similar to unemployment, but your parents are proud of you. That is quite funny. And, um, you know, for, for those people that are- I knew you'd like that, Prosper. Sorry? <laughs> I knew you'd like that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm definitely going to be using that because it, it really does solidify and really embody the 100%. whole concept because, yeah, you're literally not, you know, contributing that much. And yeah, um, yeah fantastic. And you have to come nope. with the skills as well, because otherwise you, you, you have nothing to show, really. You just have a nice degree, which is like unemployment. But your parents are happy. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you. On I should that. be a comedian. Yeah. Oh, I was I was about to say, you know, and <laughs> if you and if you want somebody to design the flyers, I know a guy. Yes. Yeah. Well done. We got there. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously with everything else that's happening in your um, mm -hmm. you know, business right now, what are some of the challenges that you face on a day-to-day -day -day basis as a graphic designer and maybe a business owner and how do you actually, you know, obviously stay motivated and focused? on creating the best work that you've been doing so far? Well, I've been struggling with this currently because um, I took like a break when my daughter was born. I just had a daughter about a year ago. And obviously being motivated comes with the challenges because now I have to focus on her, I have to focus on my wife and my family. So when do I have time? And the time that I have, am I able to sit down on my computer and work? So I've been struggling with this. And I found that you definitely have to make time, schedule in time, because otherwise, if it's not scheduled or you don't have your goal mindset, it's not going to be done. You just play, watch some reels on Facebook or some YouTube videos, and that's really addictive in itself. So you're not going to get anywhere. The computer is its worst enemy. And what I realized was that, and I spoke to someone about this as well, is that you have goals that you set for the day or like a task, a list of tasks. And, if you, and you say you complete two of those. And that's a guarantee. Regardless of the day, you have to complete two of those. That gives you motivation, that gives you inspiration and the desire and the passion to do it yourself, which can lack when you're not obviously um, when you're at home and not in an office space by yourself. Obviously, being in an office space would make it more motivational. And in terms of um, the day to day challenges in the business and in graphic design, obviously, you're familiar with AI. Everyone thinks that AI can do everything. AI doesn't give you a personal touch, no matter what. Um, you can maybe make an AI for that personal touch, but at the end of the day, that personal lacking feeling, it's lost. There's no, there's no, um, I guess there's no, there's no face to it. It just feels like a robot wrote it. It feels like a robot created this. I can make an elephant in a Coke, drinking Coca-Cola bottle with sunglasses on and it look really good, but it doesn't really represent my brand because you need a person. A person can never be replaced. It's impossible to. Um, but the challenges are that you have Canva, you have, you have AI, you have Chat GPT, all these things that are trying to replace the human agency feel. And it definitely isn't. And people think that they can do it. They can go to these places and get the same result when they can't. I'm not saying that it doesn't help them. It does complement what they do. And it does complement graphic designers as well. I think it's, an, it's naive to say that tools that help people design things um, do not are a enemy, so to speak, to graphic designers and agencies, because it's not the case. Agencies should learn how to use these tools that people are using for their benefit. Um, and I think that's a 100% thing that we need to do. A technology is only is great, and it can be used well for you, for the agency, for the cu customer. But at the same time, obviously, you have there now that you are thinking that people are saying that what you're creating is not worth the time, not worth the effort, not worth the money. And that's again, not true because when you go to like a doctor, right? You don't second guess and call all the doctors in, in the graphic, in, sorry, you don't call the doctors and surgeons saying, is this what the best price? Are you going to cut my limb here? Are you cut my limb there? Or are you going to, no, you just, you have a doctor, you have a specialist, you just trust him. You, he knows what he's going to do. 
because he knows that the best for you. But with a graphic designer, some reason there's some disconnect where you have to run a competition, for example, on 99 designs and may the best person win if they're the cheapest, which is totally against what I, what I stand for. So these are some of the challenges that we face in the design world, I believe. And at the end of the day, we're designing something that doesn't exist, which is also another challenge because it's perspective, it's subjective to people's needs. So if you don't like it, well, I did it what you wanted. So are you going to pay for it? Not going to pay for it? Going to give you a half price? Like it's a, it's a, it's a ball that can be tossed up to the air. Please, the challenges could go on personally, but the benefits obviously outweigh it because I love doing what I do, and that's the passion that brings every day. I love connecting with people, helping them bring their their dreams to life. Absolutely. And um, I do value the work that you're putting out there in the marketplace. And you're absolutely right. Yes, AI is coming, um, you know, and people are just jumping onto that bandwagon, but it only amplifies something that is already beautiful, something that already has a fundamental foundation, not necessarily, yeah. you know, just jumping on and, um, you know, trying to create something that doesn't quite exists. Now that you are obviously distinguishing your work from, um, you know, a, 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 an artificially intelligent g g generated sort of piece of, um, you know, uh, product, can you just walk us through your personal design process that actually has the personal touch, um, you know, maybe yeah. from initial concept to final product, because you did mention that you are, ex you know, designing something that actually doesn't exist. Sure. So obviously I want to go for people who are interested in the work, who need work done. So I'll give an example for a logo design. I potentially would meet them. Now it can be face-to-face -face and it can be on Zoom. And I don't think that Zoom, as you can see here, doesn't really take away from the personal feel and touch. And I tell that to clients overseas. I tell that to clients in interstate. And they say, mate, I want to see you, right? I want to, um, I want to meet with you. They say, great, we'll meet on Zoom. So we said, now I want to meet you in person. So I tell them, you know, the difference is you just can't touch me. And I don't think you want to touch me. I don't, I don't want you to touch me. So <laughs> why, like, why do we need to meet on Zoom? Well, why can't we meet on Zoom? It's beneficial to you. you. I mean, yes, there is a feeling to getting the air that we breathe each other and all the coffee. And it's nice. It's very nice. But at the end of the day, it's not always suitable. And we live in a digital world. COVID has progressed that to far extremes. And for the better, I think, overall. So... We can meet on Zoom and we don't have to be, I don't have to fly to Sydney just to have a meeting. I think that's pretty practical. Let's save money there. You save money meeting me. It's a win-win. And so <clears throat> that's the first step, meeting with the client. And I understand that. And I think with AI also, you don't get that meeting. You don't get that, you don't speak to them. You just put in a, bit, a bunch of words and then Bob's your uncle, right? And then afterwards, what my next thing is, I speak to them and I understand, I have a questionnaire that I go through. I ask them to find examples of styles they like. I get them to research. I'm sorry, I do the research, my fault there. I do the research on what they like, concepts that they might be different to what they say. And I come up with three different conceptual ideas. And I start with the logo always. In any branding, any project, or obviously the projects are different. So this is a branding project or a rebrand project because I believe that's the heart and soul of the business. And that you want to bring across. You want The professionalism is that you bring the logo design, somehow into everything. You incorporate into every little detail of your other artwork that you bring. So into your letterheads, into your Facebook accounts, even into little social media posts that you do, because that shows that you are invigorated, that you have a connection. There is there's something happening here. So when I start with a logo, I give them three conceptual ideas, one that is similar to them, to what they wanted. Some clients I have, they're really set on what they want, and there's no budging them, even if it doesn't look so good. And I try to tell them that. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, the customer is always right. And then I give them two other ideas and we go back and forth. And the reason I go back and forth is because I want to perfect the idea. I want to affect the design that they're, they're, um, that I'm creating for them. I want them to have something that they're really happy with at the end of the day, regardless of it's a back and forth hundred times or so. And some people might find that again, controversial. They want to charge royalties for it at the end of the day. And I don't think that's a good idea because I feel it's old school. And again, that's controversial, but that's my opinion. That's how I work. I want the I think that if a customer is happy, why am I holding him ransom with a with a 
um, with the files. He can use them whenever he wants. That way he's using them, he's happy. My artwork is out there, which is like what I want. I want him to be happy. I want the artwork to be out there. So I'm winning, I'm winning. Yes, I'll make as much money, but at the end of the day, it's not also about it's not always about money. I didn't come in here just for money. It is a good in incentive, but it's not the be all end all, which is why when I work with clients and they say money might be an issue, I put them on payment plans or I just try and negotiate and budget with them because I don't really, that's not money is what I want them to be focused on. The value, what I progress, what I give to them is what I want them to be seen. And throughout the whole process, those revisions I give pretty much unlimited again, because although the project might take a long time, at the end of the day, the result is what they want and they're happy. So that's a bit about my process. Absolutely. Obviously, and reason, yes. <laughs> You know, that's why it does look like it is um um obviously um you know well thought out and everything else and what sort of industries do you find um that you work best in sure we just i was remembered of one point that i was going to tell you and obviously with the challenges i mentioned before you want to be as accommodatable as possible because the moment you say no or the moment you say this price is too much you lose business and that business it's a loss to you. So all that effort you put into it, for those small little like back and forth, you've lost for no reason. Um, so what's your question again, Prosper? <laughs> what sort of industries do you find, industries, um, yes. you know, you getting a lot of success or work in? It's a good question. I've never like, I didn't really look like jump into that idea or think about it too broadly because as I, I think I've mentioned before, I don't niche. Um, I wanted to do that so I have a broad client base. So the dairy farmers, um, the supermarkets can come, the hospitality industry, the law firms, all different types. So I never, I don't think I have a real type of um, strong clientele. I guess non for profits are a good start because I do like to help them. And I think I work well with them because I understand where they're coming from. Startups are another one that I work well with because, again, I understand them. Um, I guess I'm more like, um, retail is another one that kind of comes and law firm somehow also quite interesting, can be very dull work, but can be also very promising, but again, no real specifics there because it's not something that I really focused on. Fantastic. And you did mention that, um, you know, you're creating something from scratch and mm -hmm. it's usually a matter of perspective that what the client sees is not exactly um, you know, what you have, um, you know, envisioned or things of that nature. And I also come across a few designers that have this very problem where the client doesn't quite know exactly what it is that they want, but they will know it when they see it. So have you ever come across any particularly challenging project that you've worked on and how did you sort of overcome any of the um, obje uh, um, obstacles that you came across in it to achieve the success that you now have? Well, that sounds like a job interview, Prosper. <laughs> are you hiring me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. No, there are definitely times where I've had clients who either don't like the design or they like it, they want this idea done and vice versa. And mostly the time that I spend is just going back and forth and trying to come up with their idea that they want. Clients are very black and white and the clients are very just like airy-fairy and you don't know where they're going to stand in that spectrum. So each time it's a, you put your life, you put your soul out there and you do your best because that's the only thing you can ask for. And not everyone accepts that, obviously, because we are creating, like you said, and I said that, something from nothing. We're creating art. We're not great. We can't. Do you think that everyone likes Picasso? No, not everyone likes Picasso. Not everyone likes Liana da Vinci. People did weird things with art. So it's all about perspective there. I'm very subjective. <laughs> Absolutely. I was very intrigued when you started talking about AI and how, you know, we all have this personal uh, touch, especially when it comes to uh, graphic design. And um, while we were talking earlier, you did mention one of your hobbies is playing video games and also just, um, you know, relaxing and maybe walking around. So can you tell us about, uh, do you draw any inspiration from some of your hobbies or is it all work for you then? Are you saying like, if I play games, do I get yes. inspiration from it? Yes. Um. Definitely. Yeah, no, I think that everything you see has 
a impact on you. What you, what everything you do has an impact. And to illustrate this point, I know it's a bit subtract, sidetracking on this idea. They had some advertisers who were, you know, what their job is, right? Their job is to sell things. Sell things, yes. Yeah, so I think it's an English show. They did this, and they did an experiment where they had one guy who came up with ideas, and he said to the advertisers, "You come up with your idea, right?" And they came up with the exact same idea. And you know the reason why? Because he had subliminally put messages out throughout their travel to get to the place and in the building without realizing it, like a sign going past the zoo. It was, it was like an animal for zoos or something. And it was almost identical, each one. It was like a magic trick in a way, but it wasn't. Because we, as human beings, we see everything and it impacts us all. So for sure that when I see something, when I see another designer's work, when I see something in the supermarket, great inspiration. And that's what Pinterest is for, that I find ideas. I also make a mood board for clients if they're struggling to find ideas because some people have no idea what they want. And even seeing it, before even designing it, we want to start off a, an idea of what they want. That's why I like to ask them, do you have a style you like? Have you seen something you like? Because obviously our inspirations could be different and our likes could be different. And I want to get on their wavelength when I design something. Yes, yeah, so the answer is yes, definitely. Everything I see constantly, every way I interact with anything, it all affects me and it all affects me in my work, it affects me in my life and everything, definitely. Fantastic. Earlier on, you know, I did mention you've done work with Queensland uh, government. You also do work with lawyers, which you said was a bit dull. Um, and, um, you know, other aspects of industry out there. Now, can you just tell us about a project or a campaign that you're particularly proud of that you did and why it was so successful? Sure. So um, you mentioned Light for Peace in your intro. Um, so that that came about where we needed to have something to inspire people to give money or to at least to be connected more. And I think it happened at a time, I mean, I'm trying to remember exactly the year it happened that we started this campaign where the idea came across um, that social media wasn't so prevalent. So it was quite unique and quite um, a new idea, if, if essence said. I don't remember, or at least not at that time, campaigns like it. So that quite makes it special in itself. And the idea was that um, we have a Jewish festival called Hanukkah, if you can say it. Can you say that, Prosper? Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Hanukkah, yeah. That's perfect, because most people can't say the ch, you know, that's the famous thing, Hanukkah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Hanukkah. And that's all about bringing, promote, promote, sorry, it's all about promoting peace, promoting light amongst the nations that everyone is at peace. Um, so we wanted to incorporate that idea with people lighting their Candelabra, we call it menorah. That's the Jewish word for it. And on we have, we have a lot of eight days. So you have Christmas, and you have one day of presents. We get eight day of presents. Mm. So it's eight days, not one day. It's around the same time. And maybe if we do celebrate Kwanzaa. Uh, just, I think just Christmas on my part. All right, fair enough. We, can't, we can do Chrismuka. We can do all the different Thanksgivinga, all the different types of mixed hybrids between the festivals. And... Um, so it was during this festival that we wanted to create this idea. Um, and we wanted to raise money for the soldiers in overseas. So if you took a photo with your menorah, then you, your money would be given by obviously a donor. Each time a photo was taken, money would be given by a donor to give to the soldiers, to give them winter coats and to help them with the war efforts. And it went off like wildfire. It went off in America, went off in Australia, went off in Russia. There was a copycat even of this idea. It came with like five different languages. It was completely like, it wasn't just like me designing a logo, which was a lot. We designed a logo. We designed social media posts. We designed flyers. Um, we designed stickers, banners, and so forth, and websites. It wasn't just that. It was all incorporating. It was a great project. It was a great campaign. It ran for many years. It was, I felt proud to be part of it for all those reasons that I mentioned. Fantastic. I mean, obviously, if you're doing something wonderful for other people, obviously, it does make you feel uh, fulfilled. Sure. So, And thanks for sharing that with me. Now, finally, I really got to ask, now, what was it like um, writing an ostrich in South Africa? And how did you end up doing it? How did I end up doing it? Yeah, well, I mean, I like trying new things. I try, try finding new ideas. So I've ridden a horse, I've ridden a camel. I don't know what other animals I've written. I think that's all, but maybe I've written something else. 
And I, I knew that we can write ostriches in South Africa. And I was actually doing my rabbinical studies in South Africa. And we had had a break off for a few weeks or a few days, actually. I don't remember which break we had. And we were driving towards Cape Town. And Cape Town's beautiful, as you know, or may, may know. And they have ostrich farm there. And you could ride it, which I couldn't say no to that, right? You know, you have to try it. Yeah. And I also rode an elephant in India. So now that reminds me of it. Fantastic. So, now, four different animals that I know, which are <laughs> less than good. usual ones, right? <laughs> all good, all good there, Yossi. Now, um, if people are obviously intrigued about you and want to know more about, you know, how you can help them on their journey to creating uh, maybe a lasting impact with their businesses through graphic mm -hmm. design, what would be the best way to get a hold of you? The best way to be to get a hold of me would be on my website, www dot d dash r a create it sorry d dash r a dot agency or my mobile number zero four three five two five one five eight five always happy to chat always happy to talk about anything you want really really open and really warm to discuss absolutely so please don't hesitate I'll, to call <laughs> i will also or, or website or social media as well any of the social media links as well would be great Definitely. If creative, it should come up. Great, sir. I will put your <laughs> um, LinkedIn and um, your website credentials. Yeah, my Facebook, in Instagram. Yeah, cool. Now, Definitely. thank you. <laughs> last, last but not least, Yossi, what sort of advice would you um, give to any sort of aspiring graphic designers out there who are just maybe starting out in their field? I'd say find another field because there's way too much competition. But if you're really <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth you, as I told you those challenges are just getting bigger um, and yes there will always be need for graphic designer but print is obviously dying out in a way so and it's becoming also very very much um, diversified so you have social media which is now a separate role in itself you have a brand guide designer um, so many different you have an animation video UX UA, UI you can name things so if you're just going for graphic design, I would say try not to. Try to specialize in something now. Because when I was doing it, even then it was already diversified as like when I was studying, but it wasn't as diversified as now. Now it's just off the charts. You have to be specialized in in SEO, marketing, Google, in that de sorry, in that department. Um, UI, UX. So and but if you're really gung-ho being a graphic designer and you just want to be known as a graphic designer. Well, then, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Because well, you'll see. Help there. <laughs> absolutely. You'll see. I really thank you for your time today and sharing with us your journey, um, you know, from how you got started and um, where you are right now. Okay. Now, for those that are watching at home, thank you also for tuning in to the Online Prosperity Show, where we help you achieve success and prosperity with all your online endeavors. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode and you found our guest Yossi's insights and advice helpful to, um, you know, you contributing towards the success in your own online space. Now, thank you so much. Uh, bye for now.